Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to continue our explorations of uh, regular and semi-regular tessellations. And we're going to, uh, for this lesson, need uh, the tools that you have created uh, earlier. Remember, we learned how to create a regular hexagon. And I had uh, requested that you use that technique to create uh, a regular triangle, equilateral triangle, regular quad, square, pentagon, hexagon, all the way to dodecagon, and we're going to use that uh, today. So first, let's understand what is meant by a tessellation. Tessellation uh, translates loosely uh, to English as tiling. So imagine you're looking at a point, uh, like the point that I just selected uh, in on a plane. And if you have this point, the vicinity of this point, completely covered by a particular polygon of a single type, in this case hexagon, that is called a regular tessellation. And if you look at, for example, this point, and if you look at its vicinity, you're going to notice again, it is completely tiled, covered, without leaving any gaps. Uh, but in this case, it doesn't use just a single type of a polygon. Here you have two octagons and then a square uh, together uh, making up uh, and leaving uh, no space around that point. That's called a semi-regular tessellation. Uh, one thing important about semi-regular tessellations, and I'll probably repeat this point in a minute, is that every point looks the same. So if you're at this point and you look around, you're going to see two uh, octagons and a square. Uh, that has to be repeated for every vertex that you have. So for this point, again, you have two octagons and a square, etc. Okay? So first of all, let us study uh, uh, regular tessellations. They are easier uh, to understand. Here's a chart that I have used earlier. In a minute, I'm going to refer to that. Um, so let's actually start creating tessellations of the simplest imaginable type. So I'm going to go to my triangle tool, and I'm going to uh, use it. I'm going to open a triangle and observe it goes from right to left, and it opens upwards. Now the question is, uh, let's say we are looking at this point, can you tessellate around that point? And in st instinctively you should feel that you should be able to, I'm sure you have seen triangular tessellations, tilings before. So what we're going to do uh, is we're going to try to see, and let me actually go in the vicinity of that point so it's easier to see. Oops. Um, so let's see if you could just go around that point and cover it completely. And I believe uh, that you have an instinct that this should be quite possible. I'm sure you have seen this done many times before. Uh, so we know that this works. And to understand why this works, uh, let's just remember that around the point, uh, this whole uh, space here is 360 degrees. And the question really is, does the interior angle of the polygon we are dealing with, in this case a triangle, does the number 60 evenly divide 360? If the answer is yes, uh, you will know that uh, the tessellation is possible. Uh, let's do a calculation, even though this is simple enough, you could do this mentally. Uh, 360 degrees is the total circle around the point. If you divide it by the, uh, the uh, interior angle of a regular triangle, it is 60 degrees, uh, it turns out to be 6. And what you notice is it predicts that, this uh, formula predicts that you should have 6 of these uh, triangles uh, tiling around this central point. And that's exactly what happens. Now let's do this for a square. You know, obviously, you've seen many square tilings, I'm sure. Uh, let's actually be uh, confident how to use our tools. So here is one square. Here is another one. And I'm going to try to tile around this point. Here is another one. Oops. Sometimes if you don't pay attention to how your tools work, it opens the wrong direction. Uh, and then I believe, yep, right there. And uh, in this case, uh, the computation is equally simple. 
So for this, 360 degrees divided by an interior angle of a square, which is 90, uh, the model, the formula predicts you should have four of these. Okay? So, so far we know, and we have seen this many times, I'm sure, in our daily lives, uh, these two regular shapes uh, do tessellate. And observe these are regular tessellations because I'm using only one polygon of a certain type at a time. Now let's see if pentagons will tessellate. Uh, let's actually do the math. Let's uh, predict something and then let's actually see it in works. If you go to your calculator, uh, type 360 degree divided by uh, the interior angle is 108. You should feel funny. Uh, you know that it's not going to divide evenly, okay? So we have here a prediction, before we even do it, that this is not going to be pretty. But let's see what happens. Uh, it basically is telling you, oh, you need three and uh, basically a third or so of uh, pentagons to tile the space. So you know that three is not quite enough. Uh, let's see how this is going to happen. So I have my first... And then I have my second. So far, actually, it looks kind of promising. But look what's going to happen when I put the last one. When I put the last one, uh, as the model predicts, three wasn't quite enough. If you understand this formula uh, well, it basically is telling you three is not going to be enough. You needed a little bit more than three, but not quite four yet. I couldn't squeeze here. You could try and fail. I couldn't squeeze here another pentagon. You see, it would overlap. So we know that pentagons do not uh, tile, tessellate, uh, at least on a plane. Uh, you know that hexagons will. So let's actually do that. We have done this before. So let's tile around this point. Uh, so I'm going to go one, two, and observe... Around this point, you have three hexagons uh, tessellating. Let's make this a little bit bigger to see better. Uh, and then, if you could have uh, done a calculation, 360 divided by the interior angle 120 of the hexagon, uh, the model predicts that you should have three of these. Okay? Now, a good question you could ask at this point is, what about... Uh, Beyond, could you do this with heptagon, the seven-sided uh, regular polygon, octagon, etc.? Now, if you think about it, uh, something should feel a little bit funny because 360 barely divides uh, evenly into 120 and you get 3. Uh, if you go in the list, the numbers here, the angles are increasing. So what you should notice is if you continue dividing a number um, uh, larger than 120, uh, if you divide 360 with a number larger than 120, then the result should be getting smaller than 3, which uh, really doesn't make any sense because you can't have anything less than 3 tiling around a particular uh, point. So let's just experiment with this. If I divided this, let's say, by 135, uh, you notice what's happening is 2 point something. Uh, if you divide it by 144, 2.5. Uh, if you divide it by 150, the number, uh, oops, uh, the number is getting smaller, uh, but you really cannot uh, uh, succeed with this. So you know that it's not going to work. Uh, you're welcome to try. Uh, you could try, let's try... Uh, the heptagon, the next logical thing. So you're going to be able to... So let's try to tile around maybe this point. So I'm going to do one more. So far it looks optimistic. But now look what's going to happen. Boom! Overlap. Why? Because the answer that if you did the division, uh, you'd have 360 degree divided by... I'm just going to copy the number I see here. 128.8. 571, it is going to be a number clearly less than uh, 3. And that was our hint that uh, heptagons cannot tessellate, uh, definitely on a plane. 
And anything larger than actually a hexagon, as the interior angle keeps increasing, uh, this will not uh, work. You're welcome to just experiment with more uh, and convince yourself that it will not work. Alrighty, so in the next lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do a similar analysis, but this time uh, imagining a composition of uh, regular polygons instead of using polygons of the same type. Uh, that exploration is called uh, semi-regular tessellations. So I'm just going to show you what we're going to do next class. Uh, and uh, you're going to notice that uh, they will have a mixture of polygons uh, tiling. I hope you had some uh, good insights. Uh, look forward to working with you more. Take care.